this is a battle where I played one of the competitors in my tournament, the Wars of the Ancients, uh, just to get some practice in, because I wanted to try the rule set that I made to see if it was a decent rule set, and more importantly to see if it was fun and fair. The rule set for this matchup is Marian Rome, so that means Rome without legionaries against Averni. And I had the pick of the map, so I picked Athens, which by experience is a good map for Rome because of the terrain. It's going to be easy to deny Averni the important charges that Averni needs in order to really be effective. And I brought a build that I have never tried before. I have four legionary cohort, uh, four Praetorians, three auxiliary or just two auxiliaries here in archers, four legionary cavalry and that's that. A very small elite Roman army and you can see by the balance of power that the game does not like me bringing this small army. Um, I'm not able to see what what uh, Roman Ronin has brought, and Roman Ronin is in the semi-finals. This is why we are uh, practicing with this setup. Roman Ronin has done very well, and he is facing, I believe, he's facing Armenian king in the uh, the semi-finals. So I I told him I'd upload this battle after he played his game, so that. I didn't give away any of his secrets to um, Armenian King, which is fine. So the plan in this battle is essentially to grind it out with the Praetorian Guard, shoot at important units with my auxiliary Siren Archers, uh, sort of force him to keep range because I figured he wouldn't bring many skirmishers. So I also figured that I would be able to do a lot of damage with my skirmishers and hold his heavy horse with my own legionary cavalry to buy myself the time I need to do damage with the... Um, with the skirmishers. Now he's going to present a pretty nice gift to me here because he's going to be moving downhill from me instead of uphill. I'm going to charge into the levy freemen just to do some damage uh, to them with the legionary cavalry and what I'm also going to do is charge them down and then get into the Celtic youths and try to blob up these units because that's going to allow me to shoot downhill at his general. So that sacrifice was totally worth it using precision shot to get the most damage done uh, to his general, his Celtic youths are dropping, but look at how fast these these uh, auxiliary Syrian archers are uh, killing Oldsorn here with precision shot. That's pretty good because the Oldsorn had their back turned. I had to withdraw, but this is getting 11 Oldsorn kid like that. You could argue that it wasn't worth it. I managed to kill some levy freemen, uh, some some uh, Celtic warriors, some Celtic youths, but I did lose a lot of cavalry. I lost an entire cavalry unit. Still, it's going to allow me even more time to reposition my auxiliary Siren Archers to get more shots off on his general. And uh, now his general is in a state where I am completely sure that I'm able to kill him off with the Praetorian Guard unit. He does not have a response to this happening. And him moving downhill from me is going to allow me to uh, realign myself and go even further up the hill. So the old Thorn general is just dropping so quickly. And this was, this was the plan, basically, to have a few skirmishers to do important damage to his important units. Uh, his army consists of a few old Sorn units and some Celtic youths, levy freemen, chosen swords, fairly standard stuff, uh, some light horse and some heavy horse. Very standard stuff, but I think the main mistake he makes here is in where he's positioning himself. Because look at this, he is positioning himself downhill from me. Maybe he didn't want to take the engagement over here because he was afraid I would just shoot at him with my Syrians um, downhill and into terrain where his units didn't have protection. But this is not a good place for him to be. I, I don't know what he's thinking, what his plan was here. Uh, it, it might have been to, to draw me, uh, make me face this way so he could get downhill charges with his cavalry. And that is exactly why I'm posting my cavalry up over here. But you can see his Oathsorn is being neutralized by these archers very, very effectively. He still has some uh, some uh, very dangerous Oathsorn units available. I'm going to go chasing after Light Horse with both Praetorians and Legionary Cavalry. This is a bit strange, of course. Uh, then I'm going to start firing with my Syrians on his Oathsorn that are down here. Because his general just moved out of range. Pulling them away, I need to keep my Syrian archers safe. So I'm going to try to put them between my infantry and my cavalry. 
to dissuade any attacks from Heavy Horse and he's going for a surround now so maybe the plan was indeed to engage me here and then go for downhill charges which which wasn't a bad plan. The problem is that he has his most important units down here and although he outnumbers me in good swords the Oath Sword are just getting absolutely wrecked by the Syrian archers. They're going to get charged by legionary cohort and this Oath Sword is almost at half strength already getting charged downhill Losing decisively, uh, it was still able to do a lot of damage to me on the charge because it's Oathsorn after all. Legionary cohort against Celtic warriors, that's going to go well for the legionary cohort. Uh, here we can see how the, they do against Oathsorn. Not great, but because of the terrain they're going to do better than they would on flat terrain. So they'll be able to hold here for a while. And all the time I'm shooting with uh, precision shot down at his down at his um, Oathsorn and when his general dies that's just going to be massively important it looks like they're still going to be able to defeat the legionary cohort especially when this Oathsorn unit comes in just try to hold down the flank here with Praetorians charging my Praetorians into his cavalry he wasn't able to get it away in time I'm chasing away the levy freemen with another unit of Praetorian which Praetorians which was kind of a waste to be honest but I wanted to get at the heavy horse as well my Syrians are still doing damage, not a huge amount of kills on them, but they have killed uh, killed quite a few Oathsorn and they are going to continue to kill Oathsorn. Now the units are so close that I can have them on heavy shot and keep doing the damage. Just holding them with legionary cavalry and the re I am sacrificing the legionary cavalry in order to in order to get get at his Oathsorn units. Now I have to use my Legatus to, in order to try to stop this heavy horse unit from getting into my my uh, auxiliary Serran archers, and it worked reasonably well. A unit of Oathsorn is going down to heavy shot, and now they are starting to ri really rack up the kills for the auxiliary Serran archers. They are already at the point where their kills have made them cost effective. The center of the enemy is wavering. Chosen Swords are doing decently well, uh, some weird things going on with the legionary cohort that was up against Oathsorn. But here we have a unit of Heavy Horse coming down the hill, but uh, most of my most of my Praetorians are still alive and kicking. I don't believe I've taken many casualties on them. So I kind of used the tactic of, of sending, in my, sending in my cohorts first, and then sending in my Praetorians to do the real killing when the cohorts were destroyed. And that would only work in disadvantageous terrain, because I just wouldn't have had the time if the legionary cohorts were fighting on even ground. Chosen Swords getting attacked in the rear. Um... I think the Celtic youths are out of ammo, some nice nice kills on them there. The heavy horse again fighting in disadvantageous terrain and up against even up against Syrian archers and Praetorians. Uh, well oh, they are up against Praetorians, okay I didn't see the Praetorians right away. So the Praetorians are of course decimating these uh, heavy horse units. And the Syrian archers have earned two bronze chevrons for themselves. That is just by killing a shit ton of Oldsword. They've killed almost an entire unit of Oathsorn by their own. So at this point, there's not much Averni can do. I still have my Praetorians getting some nice kills on them. And um, that's all she wrote. My units are only winded, while his are mostly exhausted. And that is, of course, a major factor in how they're able to do. The Arverni army should be losing fairly soon, so that they get the minus 75 uh, morale penalty for being in a in an army that loses. And here it comes, last charge of the legionary cavalry, and that was game. So in this game, I think I had the weaker build, but just having the archers and uh, Roman Ronin moving downhill from me allowed me to do a lot of damage and all of my units contributed in a valuable way if it was um, just by stopping enemy units for some time to allow me to kill his and look at the old sword they just did horribly bad mostly because of these auxiliary archers and the terrain they were fighting in and the Praetorians they are pretty good units um, not great on the charge, but in prolonged melees, they can just join and start doing their thing. They can grind it out to an amazing degree. So, I think on open terrain, this Roman build is, is 
too small and too vulnerable. Uh, it might work, might work, but the weak cavalry is going to get defeated by by more heavy horse. Something more typical for Averni might be four heavy horse and uh, just ditching the skirmishers. But uh, Roman Ronin told me he prepared for elephants, and that's why he brought the Celtic youths. And I figured he would prepare for elephants in some way. So I figured he would prepare for elephants by bringing uh, at least three or four levy freemen and then Celtic youths in addition. So I wanted him to, in a way, waste units uh, to prepare for my elephants. And that worked reasonably well, I think. So that's the uh, first battle between me and Roman Ronin. We played a mock tournament round. So I, I uh, the next battle, we're going to switch factions. Uh, I'm going to be commanding Averni and he's going to be commanding Rome. So let's take a look at that battle in the next video. Strength and honor.